Hello and welcome back. In section 5.3, we'd start working with exponential functions. Uh, so we'll start this with uh, a, a quick little uh, mathematical fairy tale. So the idea is that you have a job offer. And there are two pay scales offered. It's going to be a short-term gig, uh, 30 working days, so uh, six five-day work weeks. And we have two offers on the table, uh, two uh, types of pay options available. One is you can walk out with a million dollar flat fee. Thirty days of work, million bucks, very good deal. Uh, the other option is on day one, they'll pay you uh, one penny. Day two. They double that uh, lovely, magnificent salary to two pennies. Day number three, they'll double it again. You're making four whole pennies there, and they ask you which one you want. Uh, now, the fact that I'm mentioning this to you in a math class in a section on exponential functions should sort of tell you that uh, this one's a better deal than it might seem initially. And uh, you can uh, really uh, just kind of run through this uh, one on uh, just a TI or uh, if you have Excel or something like that. So if you want to just repeatedly perform the operation. So here's day one salary and each time we're multiplying by two. So if I hit times two again, it's going to learn that that's what I want it to do. So here's day three at four cents. Day four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Day 10, you're making a cool five bucks that day. So day 11, 12, 13, 14. Day 15, okay, $163. 16, 17, 18, 19. Day 20, okay, now we're talking five grand on that day. Day 21, 22, 23, 24. Day 25, uh, now you're walking away with uh, the price of a uh, uh, about the price of a house. So day 26, 27, 28, day 29, day number 30. So on day 30, and here's the part that they didn't tell you. So day 30, that day alone, they're going to pay you five million three hundred sixty eight thousand seven hundred nine dollars and twelve cents so as measly as this offer seemed of pay, paying you a penny and doubling it each day uh, that ends up being a, a much better deal for you uh, so if someone offers you that deal uh, hire me as your assistant and take the deal Okay, so exponential functions, part of the reason that the result is kind of surprising in that is that our brains are sort of trained to think uh, linearly, uh, just uh, our uh, just instincts as humans, we think in terms of uh, linear. Uh, exponential, we really have kind of trouble wrapping our heads around uh, exponential growth uh, that does some uh, some amazing things in a very short order so then uh, we'll kind of uh, set the scene uh, for the basic setup here f of x equals b to the x uh, so we have some base raised to a variable power so instead of x to a power now x is in our exponent and we have a constant for a base 
Uh, we do have a couple of rules to lay down though for this one. Uh, B is going to be a positive and uh, to avoid just sort of running in place, B is not worth one. Otherwise, one to have a higher, higher number exponent you want, one to any power is going to just kick out a one. If we are going to allow ourselves a coefficient, A times B to the X, our domain here, values we can pick out for x would be negative infinity to infinity. The range though that would depend on a. If a is greater than 0, 0 to infinity, a is less than 0, negative infinity approaching 0. So some properties of uh, an exponential function, uh, assuming that uh, we didn't have any vertical shifting. If I have f of x plus 1, that would be a times b to the x plus 1 power. Uh, but recall, uh, if we're adding the exponents that must have meant we were multiplying with the same base. So f of x plus 1 is the same as a times b to the x times b to the first. Uh, f of x, recall, is a times b to the x. If I do the ratio of consecutive integers, So f of x plus 1 to f of x, I have a b to the x over b over a b to the x. It's going to spit out a b every time when I look at consecutive outputs. So I have the same ratio each time. Now as far as sketching a graph, Start with a sketch of y equals 3 to the x. So in this one, we should be able to make just a simple table for this. Any non-zero number of the zero power is 1, 3 to the first is 3, 3 to the second is 9, 3 cubed we'd be up to tw <coughs> excuse me, 27. That's going to be off our little chart there. So then we'll just put in some guinea pigs the other way, 3 to the negative first. Recall that is the same as 1 over 3 to the positive first, or 1 third. Similarly, a negative 2 would give you a 1 ninth, a negative 3, we would have a 1 27th, and so on. And just for time's sake, I'll go ahead and use my stamp there. So 3 to the 0 was a 1, 3 to the first was 1, 2, 3, uh, 3 squared we're at 9, so 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 was fading there a little bit. And 3 to the negative first we're at a third, so a little under a half, then a ninth, 1 27th, 1 81st. Notice we're going to get closer and closer to the y-axis uh, but as long as I have a positive or a positive, that's never going to kick out a zero. It's never going to bring me into the negatives. So this is an asymptote. So asymptotes haven't gone away just because we're not working with rational functions anymore. Uh, they do still exist in the world of exponential functions. So we have this sort of... Uh, graph that looks almost linear and then all of a sudden it explodes and grows very very rapidly. Uh, if we're looking at one where we have maybe a negative exponent 
Uh, we can use shifting and reflecting to get that done. If we make our basic function y1 equals 2 to the x. So 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the first is 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 cubed is 8. After that, we would hit a 16, and going the other way, a half, a quarter, an eighth, a sixteenth, and so on. So we do still have this little asymptote here. And then we just use our properties uh, with the translation. So y2, 2 to the minus x. So x got replaced with minus x. That is a reflection about the y-axis. If it helps you, you can just look at it as 1 over 2 to that power. So they're going to cross here, and then we have 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth going this way, and then a 2, a 4, and an 8 going the other way. And then our last stage, the plus one outside, everybody moves up one unit. So that also means our asymptote would move up one unit. So now we're approaching y equals one instead of y equals zero. Okay, so the next thing that we'll do a little exploring with, um, I'm going to ask you to start plugging in bigger and bigger numbers for n in this expression, 1 plus 1 over n raised to the n. So try n equals 1, n equals 10, n equals 1,000, n equals, we'll do uh, 10 million. So pause it, plug and jug on the calculator, and see if you can find some output values there. Okay, so welcome back. So if I want to just try different values, I'll do, I'll start with the one, one store as x, and I'll do one plus one over x, close it up, raise to the x, and that spits out a 2. 10 store as x, second entry, second entry. Now we're at about 2.5937. 1,000 store as x, second entry, second entry. Now we're at about 2.7169. 10 million. About 2.71828. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to a fixed value, the number E, second and E on your calculator, 2.71828. Uh, so notice uh, it's, we're pretty far out before we start seeing a difference in the stored value of E and uh, the value we're getting. So this approaches a special number E. E is about 2.718. That's going to have a lot of properties that you get to play with in uh, future math classes. Lots and lots of nice properties. Uh, some other properties, if uh, B is uh, obeying the rules we set out before for the base, positive and not worth 1, 
b to the m power, b to the n power, if we have that and b is obeying those rules, then we know m is equal to n. So for example, they may give us something like 9 to the 2x minus 5 is worth 27 uh, to the x plus 2 power. Both of these are powers of 3. 9 is the same as 3 squared. So have 3 squared to the 2x minus 5 it has to have the same value as 3 cubed to the x plus 2. Power to a power, our shortcut is that we multiply. So now I have 3 to the 4x minus 10 is worth 3 to the 3x plus 6. So then 4x minus 10 must be worth 3x plus 6. Uh, so subtract 3x on both sides, add 10 to both sides, and x has to be worth a nice pretty 16. And occasionally, we do get multiple values out of those. Uh, might have e to the x squared is worth uh, 1 over e to the 2x times e to the 4th to the 12th. So we want to use our properties to get the same base on both sides. Left side looks good already. Right side, 1 over e to the 2x is e to the negative 2x power to power, we will multiply those guys out. So e to the x squared is worth e to the, multiplying with the same base, we add those exponents. So now that we have the base that's not a negative number and not worth one, raised to a power and it's equal on both sides, the exponents have to equal one another. So an x squared plus 2x minus 48 has to be worth zero, and that's just factorable over the integers. So x is negative eight, or x is positive six. Either one would give us a true statement in the original. Okay, so in section 5.3, uh, I'm going to try, uh, let's see if I can get back out, 1 to 14, 15 to 33 odd, 35 to 42, and 43 to 87 odd. If you have questions, please get in touch. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Stay safe out there.